watched the entire clip. And joining me now is Byron York, Washington Examiner, chief political correspondent, a Fox Business contributor. I've always wondered if the New York Times would do anything uh, more to discredit itself. Well, yesterday, that happened. Byron. <laughs> Well, so far, so good. I watched the whole clip, too. It's about two and a half minutes long, so it's not just a little bitty snippet. And Mara uh, Gay began by uh, giving her opinion that she thought Democrats in Congress should create a uh, January 6th Capitol Riot Commission uh, on their own. Uh, and then she talked about uh, Trump voters who she believed um, connoted being American with being white and the desire on her part to separate the idea of being American and being white. And then she went uh, and talked about visiting Long Island over the Memorial Day weekend, visit a friend. She saw, as you just heard, these, uh, these signs that were cursing uh, Joe Biden or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then she saw these American flags. And she said specifically that she found that disturbing too, as if flying the American flag sent the message, this is my country, you don't belong here. So that's what she said, and it really wasn't taken out of context. Uh, and I, I love the tweet, though, because it's something that you get from the left very often. It's a finger wagging, you just don't understand. Like, <laughs> I only speak and hear redneck. And so I can't, I can't interpret some, what someone is saying and say, oh, she said she's disturbed by people flying the American flag on the back of a pickup truck. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I do understand a little bit of rube and hayseed, but I was just wrong. I'm, I was just mistaken. So I took it the way that a lot of people on the left talk to people in the flyover states, as they like to refer to much of the country. Byron, stay right there. We've got this story. Lockheed Martin facing backlash over some woke training courses. The defense company now admitting that employees attend courses to bring awareness to white male culture and leaders in the company are required to be present at a three-day program called the, quote, White Man's Caucus. Fox News' Dan Springer is in Seattle with more details. Hey, Dan. Or Dagan, as you called it, the White Dude Conference, right? Um, you know, Tom Cotton, the senator, uh, Republican senator, was the one who started looking into this and asked Lockheed Martin if this was all true. And Lockheed Martin basically copped to it, saying, yes, this training happened. In fact, about 1,200 people across the country in Lockheed places have been going through similar training. It's all legal, they say, and it helps make the company better. But there are some jaw-dropping aspects. First, it was only 13 white male executives who were forced to attend this white men's caucus. At the beginning of the program, the diversity trainers led a free association exercise, asking the Lockheed employees to list connotations for the term white men. The trainers wrote down old, racist, privileged, anti-women, angry, Aryan nation, KKK, founding fathers, guns, guilty, and can't jump. It's one thing to embrace diversity. It's one thing to treat people equally and to view them based upon the ability of their work and what they actually do. It's another thing altogether to start basically putting some people down or pulling them back a peg basically because the color of their skin. Now, in its response to Senator Cotton, Lockheed CEO wrote, quote, a diverse and inclusive workforce is a critical aspect to Lockheed Martin's business strategy and culture. By encouraging a diversity of backgrounds, thoughts, experiences, and skill sets, Lockheed Martin is able to recruit and retain some of the best talent in America. The trainers had the Lockheed executives read statements from the perspective of racial minorities and women. Things like, I'm tired of you making more money than me. I'm tired of people thinking they're, they're, they're smarter than me. And the trainers say it's all about helping men discover the roots of white male culture, which is made up of things such as rugged individualism, a can-do attitude, and hard work. And they say these things are superficially positive, but in reality, they are devastating to women and minorities. Dagan? Dan, thank you so much for that report. Dan Springer for us in Seattle. Byron, before I jump to say anything, what are your thoughts on this? Well, this is just uh, surreal. It's uh, straight out of uh, China and Chairman Mao being forced to engage in ritual self-criticism. Uh, some of the things that uh, the white male executives uh, were told to do is read statements about themselves. For example, 
quote, my culture teaches me to minimize the perspectives and powers of people of other races. Quote, my reproductive organs are not seen as the property of other men, the government, and or even strangers because of my gender. Being forced to, to read this stuff, it's really just incredible that they're being uh, made to do this uh, on the pain of losing their job. This was compulsory. This was not an optional thing to do at Lockheed Martin. I just look at this and like I was talking to somebody who's uh, raising uh, children right now and the person was just saying that I'm teaching my kids to be honest, kind and exhibit a strong work ethic. And I've told them that if you're willing to show up early and stay late and do whatever it takes at work, you will do well and you will succeed. So now a can do attitude is superficial and somehow harmful to women and people of color. I mean, this this thinking is like leads to the destruction of a modern society. It it does, and and by the way, these were very very high ranking Lockheed executives being forced to do this. Uh, one was the man in charge of the F thirty five. A uh, fighter program, which is about a trillion dollar program, another in charge of the C 130 program, another really huge, huge thing. Uh, these were rather big deals uh, inside uh, Lockheed Martin. But these, they, they probably got to the positions they were in uh, by exhibiting a can do attitude and uh, working hard and operating from principles and striving towards success. I mean, these are universal things. And what the diversity trainers who were hired uh, by Lockheed Martin, and this is a, a very profitable business these days, diversity training, um, were told, uh, did, was they came in and they told these executives that those attributes, the ones that they that had made them successful and will make other people of all races successful too, uh, right. were attributes well, of whiteness and they had to well, recognize. That's, that was my thing. It's like if a, a dominant white dude characteristic is a can-do attitude and hard work, well, I'm a chick. So does that mean that I have a I don't give a rip attitude and I'm lazy. I mean, what that's what that it, it, again, it just it divides people into groups based on characteristics that just simply aren't true. But Byron, really quickly before we go, why in the name of anything that I can't say on TV, would Lockheed do this? Why is Lockheed doing this training? Well, this is very, very popular in the corporate world now. This, uh, these, these trainers, and not, it's not like they just work with Lockheed. Uh, they work with a lot of companies. Uh, sometimes I think they do it to give themselves some protection against lawsuits yep. uh, by disgruntled employees. Uh, they may worry about the Justice Department, depending on the administration in uh, power in Washington. So there are business reasons uh, to do it, but they also seem to be caught up in the current uh, woke trend as well. Great to see you, Byron. Thank you so much, Byron Thanks, Noor.